is a story of a man who never belonged anywhere, whose backyard is the world, whose ways of life are the dreams of escape for those who want action but never find it. The man, John Steele, adventurer. <laughs> There's a legend in the Far East. When you travel, you only see the beginning. No traveler ever sees the end. That's pretty true, I think, no matter where you go. Whether you're looking out of a car, train, or plane window, or riding an ox cart in the rainforest of Arakan, east of Kittagong and west of Mandalay, the endless rainforest of bamboo. Bamboo, never yielding, always bending, like the men at Rosemere. <laughs> far-off trails transcribed with John Steele, adventurer. And we'll be back in a moment to tell you the real story. I'd come 7,000 miles to call a cop, a local cop. The place was village number 10 on the coast of Arakan, where Assam, Burma, and India come together to meet the Bay of Bengal. Village number 10. It had no other name. 10. Village number 10. Right? I'm in the right place? Uh, yes. Yeah. You're the cop? Police? You're the policeman? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Then give me some service. You have trouble? 10 minutes. I've been trying to tell you that. Uh, what trouble? Are you speak you? English? My credentials are all on that paper. Yes. Yeah. My passport, my visa. You've been holding them 10 minutes. You speak it. Don't you read it? Uh, what is your trouble, Sahib? Read them. Down here. All of them. Here. The papers. These invoices. Ah, yes. Yes. Uh, invoices for what? A shipment of bamboo. A bamboo? Bamboo that was supposed to have been shipped from here. Ah, yes. From here to my client in the United States. Uh, Tell me about the United States. What? Huh? Is it that they say? Be quick, everybody eats me. You're going to listen to me? Bamboo, the whole shipment. I want you to investigate it. Bamboo? But say, go take. Go what? The huh? woods, we are full of bamboo. Why do you bother me? Because this shipment was paid for in advance. Oh, oh. you lose the bamboo. My company, yeah. We lose the bamboo. I get... Stolen, you understand? We're robbed. Uh, who would this be a bamboo when we are full in the woods? This is special. Oh. Specially selected, specially matched to make fishing rods. You cut fish in the United States with I bamboo? I have fishing rods. You eat fish too? Fishing is a sport. You think it was a story? Huh. It uh, could create trouble, you think? The bamboo or the money back? Huh? I do not have the bamboo. I do not have the money. You're the police chief. Oh, I see. I have the key. Somewhere around here, yeah, sure. Mata, you think? Who? Mata. Only he. That's the man's name? Mata. Very bad. Only he would have seen it from you. Well, who's this Mata? Very bad. Bandit. Outlaw. I looked for him many years. Think he did it? Oh, yes. Mata. I look for him ever since I'm police chief. I am police chief 20 years. How do you know this matter is responsible? Oh, matter very proud, very jealous. We are small territory. Too small to support more than one bad man like him. Matter must be him. Ah, that figures. Matter, ah, yes. Bad, very bad. Oh, I don't care who it is. You're just going to sit there in your rug? You're just going to sit on that rug? Matter already killed 20, my best policeman. What's the matter? No. Hey, too hot. We go late. Not later. No. Come on. Come on, stand up. No, I don't. Come on, we go look now. Uh, rush. Uh huh. Americans, all the time rush. All right, we get Buller Quack and we go. But I tell you, I already look for Mata 20 years. We went. Rubenia, the reluctant police chief, and me. We kicked the half-wild pie dogs out of our way. The savage street dogs that growl and come at you if you come near their garbage. Garbage and flies all over the streets piled high. And here and there, a holy blue cow. Rubenier hitched up the bullet cart. He twisted their tails and started off. I was glad to get into the cool forest away from the stink, smell, and smoke of the village. Glad to get in among the trees. But we were going slow. Too slow. No, Rush. You know where we're heading? Oh, 
There you go. What's that mean? You go here, you go there. Just like that. Anyway. Is it all? Say, you really want to help me find that bamboo or who stole it? Dharma. What's that? Beauty. You sure you know what you're doing? All roads come together. Where? It's not this life. Some other. You do not believe in reincarnation. This is no time for religion. Mother, I think he is so bad. You know, I think in his last life he was a snake or maybe lizard. Last life? Perhaps even King Cobra. Now, oh, look, King. Man so bad, maybe even was tiger. What do you think he was before? Look, I'm not out here to discuss religion. Oh, but of course, you wish to find the bamboo or the teeth. But for this, you must have religion. Can't you go faster? You absolute must, Sahi. Faster. Just make them pull faster, huh? Most necessary, Sahi. This is not big city, only big city, you say. Oh, come on. I can walk as fast as this wagon goes. It's village standard, huh? Village rules here. Not big city bureaucrats like in Calcutta, Bombay. What's the village got to do with it? That is why I have never been able to cut matter. What's it got to do with me? I am chief of the police in the village. They do not help me. Villagers along the way here, huh? They have sympathized with the matter. With the bandits? No, yes. They take his side against you, huh? They do not support me. Well, nobody likes thieves and outlaws. How come the village people don't help you catch them? The villagers do not like anybody who is not like them. Yeah, but you're the law. The law is from outside. Huh? The law comes from the big city. But this martyr terrorizes the people. He's a thief and a killer. He robs them. They say big city robs them, too. The taxes. Oh. I collect taxes, too. Oh. That's why they don't like you. They're afraid to say they do not like me, but when Mata hides in their villages, they are on the side of Mata. Every minute they pray Mata will kill me before I can collect the next tax. Oh, great. But when I come to the villages to look for Mata and he runs away, when they see me, then they are on the side of me and they pray I kill him. You see, I have a very difficult position. rifle high, high and handy, not so much because he told me, but because I could see Rubenier's lip twitch and his fingers tremble on the long leather reins of the bullet wagon as we went into the bamboo. The rain fall. Bamboo, wherever you look, thin and thick. Tiny little grassy saplings, no thicker than a fly rod, all the way up to 120-foot giants with trunks as wide as a man. Creepy, quiet, the ground covered with young bamboo grass growing so fast you could almost see it move. Soft and rustling under the wagon wheels and the bullet through. Stop, down. Caught. Out of the wagon. Come on, Mike. You all right? This will be pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great Lord Vishnu, once again, Mata Mishi. Around here. Yeah. yeah. Crawl behind here, behind the wheel. Good, good, good. Good. Shot came from straight in there. The wind. Yes, the wind. He sees us. Can't see him. Bamboos all over. Bamboo. Dim in there. Huh? Too dim. Shadowy. Light, yes. Very weak in there. You see anything? You sure it's him, Mara? Ah, yes. He steal your bamboo ship, man. You sure he knows why we're here? Ah, yes. It will travel on the wind. Come on. Let's travel in after. Ah, we started in. Into the bamboo. The tall, straight, silent, branch with bamboo. It was daylight. It must have been bright and sunny outside the woods, but there was no sun in here. The bamboo did something to the sunlight. It filtered out the yellow and left the light weak and silver, white as moonlight down in here. Weird, motionless bamboo. A splinter stuck in my ear, and for a minute, I felt myself go roaring mad inside. Crazy mad at the bamboo. As if they weren't trees, mad at them, just as though they were really people. Tall, skinny, pale, yellow people without arms, standing there watching us. Watching us. Not helping us. Not helping us more than they were helping him. Then I almost laughed. I almost had to laugh at myself for letting the weirdness of the woods get to me. But I couldn't laugh. I looked over at Rubenir. He was sweating, too. It wasn't funny. It was as funny as the next blast of a 306. And he Yes. Rifle shot. Guess he beat it. Yes. Yes, we... Yes, we let him get away. Wait. He went west. 
Whiskey? Oh, broken bamboo shoots, yeah. The road circle left? Yes. Back to the road, or we keep straight on in after and through here? Uh, the road. Quicker? More comfort. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I know. We've been chasing him 20 years. <laughs> Darmstala, the government shelter building of number nine, where Ruba, like all visiting government officials, called village meetings. Darmstala, the pitch dark, smoky little mud building, lighted by a charcoal brazier, sending up smoke and a faint red glow. Ruba near, behind a hand carved peak desk, a foot high, squatting behind a funny little desk. And all around, jammed to the walls, the angry faced village peasants, shaking their heads. They still didn't answer. I expected Rubenier to get mad. He motioned me to come squat behind his little desk instead. You see, Sahib, hmm. it is a serious problem, no? They didn't tell you, huh? They know I know Mata is hiding here. But they won't tell. We know he had to come here. We know, yeah. And they know we know. After all, did he not almost kill us? Did we not trail him here? Are we stupid? Are we dumb? Sure, sure. But they won't tell you. He is either hiding in this village or they know which way he went. Well, they won't tell you. Why waste time? Waste? Where I come from, they call it waste of time. America. Yes. Efficiency. One, two, three. Tell me. You are an American. You see these villagers. Yeah. You see their faces. They look at me like I am here for taxes again. (laughs) You are American. What would American police chief do? I don't know what he'd do with them. I curse. I yell. I insult their mother, their father. I tell them next night they will all be born dirty dogs, by dogs, eating street garbage. I yell. And what do you think? Look. Look how they look back at me. (laughs) Tony! Two dress! You see? Sit. They sit. They make dumb monkey face back to me. All right. That's going to get me back my ship in the bamboo. I show you what I do. Meeting at St. John's. Why have to see you here and I'll be all I translate for you, Sahib. Why have no leader of your select matter? I tell them they must each come up here to the desk and write down the way in which Mata has gone. If they're scared of Mata, what makes you think they'll write down the truth? They won't. Huh? They will write down the opposite way Mata goes. <laughs> it's funny. The opposite way. Oh, brother. Because they are afraid of him, you see. This way, if Mata come back here, they can tell Mata, we not tell Rubanir, the policeman, the right way. We tell him the wrong way. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> well, how can Mata blame them? I guess they can't. Exactly. This way, every man is innocent. Nobody squeals, huh? How come they're not wise to you? Oh, they're wise, but it still leaves them innocent, you see, and I can find what they want. They tell me go north, I go south, everybody is happy, and nobody is. Happy? Yeah. What about my bamboo? Oh, yeah. Is there a car in the air, Thomas? First, we must call them up to write down the direction. Yeah, the direction he didn't go. They did. One by one, they came up to the desk, and they wrote down the direction Mata was supposed to have run. They all wrote north, so we went south. South in the bullock wagon, down the road to the rainforest of bamboo trees. Only now it was getting dark. The silver light was fading. The overgrown road was hard to see. Then all at once the ground caved in. (laughs) Suspense and action. One leads to the other. And the result we'll hear in a moment with the climax of another adventure with John Steele. I remember falling, falling into the trap, the grass-covered jungle pit, the feeling and the crash of falling in with Ruben here on the wagon, and I didn't remember a thing. 
I opened my eyes, dark. For a crazy minute, I was afraid I'd gone blind. I knew I'd open my eyes, but I still couldn't see. Then I heard birds and bugs. I began to make out differences in the darkness. Shapes. A dark shape beside me. The shape moved. Mm-hmm. Ruben near. He was sitting beside me. I tried to put a hand out to him, but I couldn't. My hands, my legs, tired. I was tired. Then it hit me all at once. I was standing up, my arms out, legs out. I was tied that way to different bamboo trees. My apologies. Ruben, are you tied? Uh, you. What? <coughs> Who? Mata. Mata. I... You will hurt yourself. I'll hurt him. If I ever get loose here. For you. you only tear your skin. Yeah, tear. Yeah. Yeah. My apologies. I am afraid 20 years. Matter catches me. Where, where is he? You wish to cry? Yell, call him? He is near. He is far. Watching us, maybe. Who knows? Yes. He catches me. Only please. Yeah, please. yeah. He also caught me. What's he going to do? Why'd he set that elephant road pit? Well, you're all the time bragging you're different. You're all different. Things different around here. Why'd he... Brag? You... Oh, no. Well, what's he going to do to us? Why, has he got us tied up here? Don't you feel? Huh? Oh, Stan, I must be tied tighter than you. What are you talking about? You don't feel. Sure I feel. <laughs> feel I'm tied. Hands and legs stretched and hanging like a butchered pig. <laughs> What do you mean, I don't feel? <coughs> what do you mean? <coughs> What's that noise, him? No. Is that him in the dark? He is not here. Now, what's that sound? <coughs> what's hurting you? Um, dark, what's going I can't see. Bamboo. Bamboo, yeah, yeah, we're tied to the bamboo. Reef. Bamboo is gross. A man can stretch on the inch or two. Three. Listen. <coughs> The bamboo tree. It grows. Uh, Robo. Robo. Uh, Robo, that. I'm stretching. The bamboo, that, that's what you mean. The bamboo? Uh, bamboo. The bamboos are growing. Growing. I was tied and spread eagle, hands and legs spread eagle, and the trees, the bamboo trees were growing. I could feel them, feel them growing up, 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 higher and higher, inch by inch, growing higher, growing higher. I could hear them growing, and I was tied to the trees. I was stretching. I could feel my arms and my legs, my arms pull at my shoulders, try to pull away, pull out of my shoulders, the socket, my shoulder socket, my legs. My legs pulled away from my hips. Every minute I felt myself being pulled, pulled four different ways, pulled apart. The bamboos were growing. I was on fire. My shoulders, my leg socket, fire, pulling, ripping, pain, fire. Through the pain I remembered, I remembered what Ruben said. A man can only stretch inches. The trees, the bamboo trees, they grow inches here, 16 inches overnight. 16 inches in 24 hours. Wet. I was wet. I was wet outside, cold and wet. And inside, I was on fire. Thunder, water. That's like a lot of rain, Ruba. Ruba, wake up. Wake up, buckets of rain. My hands, the ropes on my hands. They're looser. Looser. On my hands, the, the rain. They're getting loose. Dude, the trees. The trees are starting to let me go. Oh, Vishnu. Great God, Vishnu, blessed one. I'm starting to slide, Ruba. Blessed one, blessed one, send monsoon. I, Ruba, I'm, I'm sliding down a couple of inches. Thunder. Monsoon is at the beginning. I I can feel the ground. Monsoon. Monsoon comes. Water. Me. I can feel water on the ground. May, the end of May. Monsoon, monsoon, now to October. I, uh, I, I'm... I got one for you, Ruba. Vishnu, hey, Vishnu, destroy that. Vishnu, Vishnu. I had it tied up with leather, Ruba. A leather wagon rein. <laughs> I'll have you free in a minute. Free? Hold, hold still. Huh? No man is free in monsoon. Can't get out of here. No, no, sure, sure. Just uh, relax while I slip off these. No man can tell where he is in bamboo in monsoon. The road, the bamboo, it grows it so fast you cannot see, you cannot tell to see. Huh? To find a way out. Bamboo, all the sea bamboo. 
only one hope, Sahib. The rain. Mansoor always comes southwest. We must go against the rain. The rain. Monsoon rain. Driving. Drilling rain. Building up on the ground. Sweeping everything with it. Rolling up around our knees. And all we can do is shield our eyes and go against it. Rain boiling down among the bamboos. Then we stumbled over a waterlogged ridge and down to a village. A man was bending beside a bamboo building. I saw Ruba start sloshing down the ridge, down toward the man. A little dried up man in a silk and dirty loincloth. Mata ducked into the building and came out with a rifle. She threw it up at Ruba and I started to run through, run for Mata, run through the rain. The gun, the rifle, Ruba! I ran. Mata, the bandit, the outlaw who tried to kill me. I slipped and slid down through the rain. I saw Mata aim the gun at Ruba. I saw him pull the trigger, but the wet gun only clicked. Mata threw away the gun and grabbed a thin, young bamboo. He split it near one end. Split the end into a spear. Split bamboo, sharper than any spear. Ruba did the same. Then I ran after them. I lost them both in the rain. Now, come on, come on. Get over it. He gets away. Sure, sure. Two feet from him I was. Uh-huh. I raised the bamboo. I go to... Yeah, yeah, you told me ten times. And I sleep like so. Sure. Hmm? You do not believe me, huh? I told you. Sure. Two feet away in the rain. What do you do? Taking these shipping crates against my invoices. Your bamboo or feet? Mm, best as I can make out. The invoice got pretty blurred. Ah, yay. Terrible, terrible rain. <laughs> what are you so happy about? Happy? Uh-huh. Oh, I am not so happy, Sahi. No, huh? No, I am very, very sad. Sure. You are only two feet. I said I... you I sleep. He gets away. Sure you uh, didn't let him get away? Oh, oh you're a real cunning man, Sahi. <laughs> I don't give you answer to that question. I have real good position, policeman. As long as Mata's free, huh? Oh, I still don't give you right answer. Well, uh, how about the wrong one? Sahi, policeman without criminals is like tax collector without taxes. How can he live here, Sahi? <laughs> one needs the other, huh? Someday I retire, Sahi. I think then... That day, Mata retired too. <laughs>